I've gotten a lot of questions lately about anxiety and how to get rid of it or how to feel better. And there are so many tools out there to help you. My personal approach as a therapist is called acceptance and commitment therapy. And I will provide you with some of my favorite tools that help you relate differently to your anxiety, which many times results in it getting better anyway. Too many people focus really hard on trying to get rid of their anxiety. And I get it, it's not a great feeling and we just wanna feel happy and calm all the time. The thing is that we need anxiety to survive, to love, to connect to others and to succeed. But the problem is that sometimes we become so anxious that it can be really hard for us to, fun to function. So there are a ton of techniques out there that discuss challenging and changing and replacing your thoughts to help you with anxiety. But this process can be exhausting and frustrating because you're constantly having to challenge and to find alternatives and wondering if your thoughts are rational or irrational. So I have tools to give you today that will help you not challenge your thoughts, but relate to your thoughts differently, rather than having you fight them and analyze them to see if they are true or false or realistic or not. But first, are you new here? Welcome, I am so glad that you are here. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. I make videos about mental health once a week. So make sure that you subscribe and hit the notification icon, that way you are always up to date. And if you're coming back, welcome back again. You know I appreciate you so much and your continued support. Please make sure to like and comment. This helps my video reach more people who may find it helpful. So grab your cup of coffee and let's dive right in. So my first not so average coping skill for anxiety is called diffusion. So diffusion means creating a space between the thoughts that you're having and who you are or yourself. We have tons of thought that go through our brains every single day. And if we took every single one of these thoughts to be true, or if we analyzed every thought that went through our head, we would be exhausted. So instead, we can try to notice that we're having these thoughts, acknowledge them, and then get back to what we're doing. So one tool, well, here are a few of my tools to help you to do this. And one of them is called, um, it's, it's using the phrase, I'm having the thought before each of the thoughts that you're having. So here's an example of this. So if you find yourself thinking, I'm not good enough at this, I should, I should just quit because it'll never work. Notice it, notice it and say, I notice myself having the thought that I'm not good enough at this. I'm having the thought that it will never work. I'm having the thought that I should just quit. This phrase that we add helps because when we notice the thought as what it is, a thought, and we acknowledge it, then it doesn't necessarily mean it's true. We're acknowledging that it's a thought and it creates a bit of a separation between the thought and yourself. You can practice this with something silly, such as by saying to yourself in your mind, I cannot stand up and stand up anyway. And this will help you practice that even though your brain is telling you something, you still have control. My second tool is name your brain. So this is another diffusion skill. It is to name your brain so that whenever you find yourself thinking thoughts that are unhelpful to you or to your life goals, you can say, thank you brain for the warning and for your concern. But I'm going to do this anyway because I really want to. So I'll give you a personal example of this. I always feel scared to make and post videos because I fear judgment and I feel that what if I screw up? 
So often my brain tells me, you suck at this. No one is watching anyway, so what's the point? So I decided to name my brain Miriam. And every time that these or similar thoughts come through my mind, I say, thanks Miriam for expressing your concerns for me and worrying about me and worrying that I will be judged. I know you're just trying to protect me, but I do want to do this because my purpose for doing this is to help others. And even if only one person watches, then that's one person that could benefit. My third uh, tip for diffusion is try thinking your thoughts in a funny voice, such as Yago, the parrot from Aladdin, or a big, big monster with a squeaky, itty voice. So if you think to yourself, no one will like me, but then you think that thought again in a silly voice, such as a parrot or Donald Duck, then chances are that that thought loses its seriousness. It'll probably make you laugh, and the main point is to help you separate yourself from the thought. My next tip might scare some of you a little bit because it is to allow yourself to feel anxious. So anxiety is important, and it is usually trying to bring your awareness to something or to help you stay safe. The more that you try to push your anxiety away, the more it will grow. Just like when you tell yourself to not push that red button, automatically we want to push that red button. We want to do the things we tell ourselves not to do. So let's try this little experiment for the next 10 seconds. For the next 10 seconds, don't think about bananas, okay? Whatever you do, do not think about bananas. Ready, set, go. Okay, stop. How many bananas did you think of? If you don't have some sort of brain super skill, you probably thought about bananas way more than you would have liked to. This is the same case with anxiety. The more you tell yourself not to be anxious and the more that it doesn't work, the more anxious you will get. And chances are that at this point, you're actually just anxious about not being able to control or stop your anxiety. Are you still with me? So when you feel anxious, sit with it, allow it to be present, feel it, notice the thoughts. Where are they in your body? See if you can find a message, which brings me to my last tip which is to ask yourself, what is your anxiety trying to tell you? What are you longing for? What are you missing or needing? We're usually feeling anxious because we have a need or a want, and we are afraid that we won't be able to get that need or want fulfilled, or maybe there is a threat to us. If we listen to that deep need within ourselves, we might be able to pinpoint what it is and have a deeper understanding of ourselves, and that can help drive our behaviors. For example, if you're always anxious and you are in school, you could lean into your anxiety and try to see what you are longing for. Try to listen to it. Is it success? Is it a bright future? Is it the ability to take care of the bills? Is it making deep, meaningful friendships? Maybe it's a combination of all of these. You might find yourself always feeling anxious because maybe these areas of your life are not where you want them to be. So try to sit down with yourself and identify your values. Ask yourself, how do you want to be remembered? How do you want to view yourself? And then try to show up in that manner as many times as possible throughout your day. This naturally will help relieve these feelings of anxiety. But if we only focus on getting rid of the anxiety or not feeling that anxiety, and we don't tap into it or listen to it, then what ends up happening is we miss this message, very important messages of what we really want or what we value. And it just creates more and more anxiety in the long term. So those are my not so common tips um, for anxiety. 
please let me know what has worked for you. What helps you with your feelings of anxiety? What do you do? Have you tried any of these before? Would you be willing to try them and let me know how they work out for you? I would really, really appreciate um, any comments after trying these tips to see how these worked out for you. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.